Ladies and gentlemen, a new snapshot for Minecraft Java Edition 1.17 The Caves and Cliffs update has been released. Here is 21W05A, bringing you a whole bunch of blocks that are going to be used in the upcoming Lush Caves. The caves themselves are not in the snapshot, but all the blocks and the gameplay functionality is. My name is Celeste Lime, I'm here to guide you through all the changes in this version, and let's start with those new blocks and items. There's a new type of bush in the game, it is the Azalea. It comes in non-flowering and flowering version, and there are also leaves, non-flowering and flowering. There are also new decorative blocks for the upcoming Lush Caves, hanging roots and rooted dirt. Rooted dirt is a full block whereas hanging roots is placed in ceilings. Another block that is placed in ceilings is the new Spore Blossom. That is a beautiful large flower that is placed on ceilings and it has particles dripping from it. Even more things on ceilings, there are new cave vines that have glow berries. Cave vines grow down from the ceiling just like weeping vines do in the nether. When they grow, they have a chance of producing glow berries and glow berries can be picked and eaten. Those glow berries are also a natural source of light. And if you use one while looking at a ceiling, you can plant a new cave vine. Bone mailing a cave vine will cause glow berries to grow. Another new type of item that has been added is the moss block. Moss blocks are full blocks that have the moss texture on all sides, and they can also be crafted like wool into moss carpet. Let's talk about drip leaf. There are two versions of this, one small and one big. The small drip leaf is a too tall flower. It needs moisture so it grows either fully or partially underwater or on top of clay blocks. Small drip leaves also grow into big drip leaves if you use bone meal on them. So let's talk about that big drip leaf. If you keep bone mealing it, it will grow taller. Any entity standing on top of a big drip leaf will cause it to start tilting. It will first become unstable, which is not visible, but detectable by an observer. It will then start tilting, which you can visibly see, and then finally if the entity is still there, the drift leaf will tilt fully, at which point the entity will fall off. After a while, the drift leaf will tilt itself back up. When you are standing on the drift leaf, you can crouch or jump to prevent it from tilting. The big drift leaf will also break when hit by a projectile. If you want these new blocks in survival, there is actually a way to do that even before the biome itself has been added. The Wandering Trader will now sometimes sell small drip leaves at the same quantity and price as lily pads. Finally, in this section, let's talk about copper. The stages of copper oxidization now have new names. In order from least oxidized to most oxidized, copper block, exposed copper block, weathered copper block, and oxidized copper block. The same naming goes of course also for all the variants of the blocks, including all the cut and the waxed ones. All types of copper blocks can now also be cut using the stone cutter. Finally, I'll also mention a slightly technical thing. The copper oxidization process is now controlled by random ticks. In normal gameplay you might not see much of a difference with this, but it does mean that changing the random tick speed game rule will affect copper now. Let's talk about mobs, but stay on the topic of copper. Drowned now have a chance of dropping a copper ingot instead of dropping a gold ingot. This is a player kill loot drop. Skeletons can now convert to strays when they are frozen for long enough. Foxes can now walk on top of powder snow without falling in, and foxes also have a new food in glow berries. Last snapshot there was an attempted fix for a bug where mobs would suffocate or glitch through blocks when growing up near a solid block. Another attempt has been done in this version. And that goes also together with a bug fix to a lot of different smaller mobs, especially babies, taking suffocation damage when pushed against a ceiling. The pufferfish hitbox could be incorrect when reloading a world. That could mean that it faced through blocks or triggered tripwire without colliding with it when you reloaded the game. That has been fixed in this version. When upgrading to the previous snapshot, any shulkers that you had around would rotate. And when hit by a shulker bullet, a shulker would misrotate off grid somewhat. If you were standing right next to a shulker and that shulker opened, then you would get stuck to the lid and lift off. And in the previous snapshot, shulkers would often be incorrectly rotated when they generated with an end city. Let's talk about skulk sensors. Skulk sensors have been expanded in this version to add a whole slew of new game events. 
For frequency 6, there are three new events, they are minecart moving, a bell being rung and a block change. The block change in this context is when a player or dispenser or mob will change a block, for instance, eating a slice of a cake, filling or emptying a cauldron, extinguishing or lighting a campfire, placing something in a flower pot or placing a book on a lectern. Anything like that that changes a block already placed in the world. On frequency 7, drinking finish is added and prime fuse. And that prime fuse applies both for priming a TNT and a creeper. For frequency 8, a new event called mob interact has been added. That is for specific mob interaction events that cause vibrations, such as healing an iron golem. For frequency 9, three new events, they are equip, shear and ravager roar. For frequency 12, entity place, that goes for, for instance, armor stands, paintings, item frames, minecarts, and boats. And frequency 13, entity killed. Same thing when those entities are killed. Two more events on frequencies 14 and 15 for shelters closing and opening. In addition to this, a large amount of expansions and bug fixes to skulk sensors. There were certain flying mobs they didn't detect that is fixed in this version. They could sense players sneaking if that player was in water that is fixed. Skulk sensors will now detect a fire charge setting fire to a block, blocks being picked up or put down by an enderman, a non-player mob eating, buckets of fish being emptied, putting out a fire, squids swimming, ender dragons shooting, gas shooting, collecting water with a bottle or connecting a honey bottle, and breaking a bee nest or beehive in creative mode. In addition to that, bugs have been fixed where skulk sensors would detect if a bow was fired in sneaking mode if that bow had a flame enchantment, and flame arrows would repeatedly trigger skulk sensors. Finally, ocelescent cats will no longer emit vibrations while they are sneaking. Let's talk about other gameplay changes and let's start in the nether. Placing glow lichen in lava no longer creates waterlogged glow lichen. A few changes to powder snow, flaming arrows now get extinguished when they collide with powder snow. Powder snow is now pushable and pullable by pistons. And the bug has been fixed where cauldrons didn't fill up with powder snow in certain biomes despite the weather being snowy. Boats will now dismount you in the correct direction where you are facing instead of the direction of the boat. There's now a new tutorial, the first time you use a bundle. And glowberries are now required for the A Balanced Diet advancement. A bunch of the new items are compostable. Non-flowering azalea leaves, glowberries, moss carpet, small drip leaves and hanging roots all have the lowest chance of adding a layer, the same as adding normal leaves or seeds. Flowering azalea leaves have a slightly higher chance of adding a layer, the same as adding a cactus or sugarcane. Spore blossoms, azalea, moss and big drip leaves all have a slightly higher chance still, same as adding a flower or a mushroom. And the flowering azalea has an even higher chance, same as adding a piece of bread or a baked potato. And finally, a bug has been fixed when, if you spawn inside the debug world, then you would spawn on the wrong height. A couple of visual fixes in this version. Powder snow would cause sea fighting with falling blocks that is fixed in this version, and lightning rods are now correctly shaded. Let's talk about sounds. If you were in water or powder snow at the same time as you were touching a block that would set you on fire, either a fire block or a lava block, then the extinguishing sound would play over and over and over. There are of course also added new sounds in this version. There are sounds for azalea, placing and breaking them, and for stepping on them. There are new sounds for azalea leaves, for placing and breaking them, and stepping on them. New sounds for the big drip leaves. Placing and breaking them. Stepping on them. The drip leaf tilting down. And the drip leaf tilting back up. New sounds for placing and breaking cave vines. And new sounds for placing and breaking normal vines. Placing and breaking sounds for hanging roots. And step sounds for hanging roots. Sounds for moss, placing and breaking them. And stepping on them. 
New sound for placing or breaking rooted dirt. And for stepping on it. New sounds for the spore blossom. For placing or breaking it. And for walking on it. And finally, a new sound for a skeleton converting to a stray. In addition to this, a slew of stability and performance fixes in this version, including a number of crash fixes. Despite all of those crash fixes, keep in mind that this is a snapshot and it will be less stable than a full release. Also, any world that you open in this version will never be possible to downgrade safely to an older version again. So, if you want to play this version, do so on a backup of your world or on a separate test world. If you do want to try this version out but you don't know how to, then click on the link in the iCard on the video right now or in the video description. That'll take you to a tutorial video about how to get and play a Minecraft snapshot. And that was all I had for you for the gameplay changes in Minecraft Snapshot 21W05A. Another video will be coming up shortly with the technical changes in this version. Take a look at that one if you're interested in changes for things like commands, loot tables, tags, and resource packs. With that said, thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful, and if you did, please help me out in return, leave a like, drop a comment about your favorite feature in the snapshot, or share it with one of your friends. If you want to stay up to date with all the changes in Minecraft Java Edition, then please subscribe to this channel, I make update videos for every new snapshot, pre-release, release release candidate or full release, and don't forget to hit that pesky bell icon so you get notified when the videos are out. My name is Slice Lime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.